Women's 100 breaststroke is Jillian Tyler. Et Jillian Tyler qui s'impose au 100 mètres brasse chez les dames dans un chrono de 1.07.18. Deuxième position pour Tara Van Billen en 1.07.37. Et finalement, troisième position, Martha McCabe en 1.08.12. Ladies and gentlemen, it's also official. Both Jillian Tyler and Tara Van Bylen qualify for London 2012. Exciting. Very exciting. Second century church father Irenaeus once wrote that the glory of God is a human person fully alive and life consists in beholding God. Jesus, the face of God, once said, I've come that they might have, they may have life and have it to the full. Before Tara Van Bylen headed off to London, uh, we had a long conversation via email together, and she wrote in one of her emails these words, I was blessed with the gift of swimming, and it's my job to use my talent and praise God while I'm doing it. And that's all he asks. I've learned that we have been created for a purpose, and it's our job to use our gifts, whatever your gifts are, to glorify God. Her words reminded me of Gerard Manley Hopkins's favorite, famous, my favorite poem from him called As Kingfishers Catch Fire. The first verse goes like this. As kingfishers catch fire, dragonflies draw flame. As tumbled over rim in roundy wells stones ring, like each tucked string tells, each hung bell's bow swung finds tongue to fling out broad its name. Each mortal thing does one thing and the same. Deals out that being indoors each one dwells, selves, goes itself. Myself it speaks and spells, crying, what I do is me. For that I came. What Tira Van Bylen does as an Olympic athlete, and all of those athletes in London right now, of course, the same, is her. For that she came for this moment in her life. Hopkins goes on in the second verse. I say more. The just man justices, keeps grace that keeps all his goings graces. Acts in God's eye what in God's eye he is, Christ. For Christ plays in ten thousand places, lovely in limbs and lovely in eyes, not his. To the Father through the features of men's faces. And today, Christ plays in London through the face of one of his followers, Tara, Tara Van Bylen. And my question then is, Jesus, what are you showing us through how she bears your image as an Olympic athlete? What is what she is doing today, this morning, her qualifying heats, then the semis, and maybe more, what does that say about who you are? In the course of about a month's dialogue back and forth with Tara, several things came to mind, but two of them for this morning. The first one, and the most numinous for me, was the lesson that in life and in our pursuits of our passions, there is a way. As Tara, Tara described it, what she does and is, as she described that to me, I kept thinking God, there's a grain to the universe. There's a best way for some things to be done. The best way to live a life before God. A best way to be a fully alive human being. And this thought of there is a way came to me as I was asking Tara, okay, 
I get what you do in the preparation. I get all the prayers you do and how this is a God thing. But in the, in the race, the beeper goes, you dive and hit the... What happens between that and 107.37 and qualifying for the Olympics? What's, what's happening in the, in the glory of that moment? She had no idea. <laughs> she swims it. She couldn't put words to it. She says, I get asked all the time by reporters. I don't know how to answer that question. So I tried to answer it for her because I'm foolish enough to think with my athletic prowess, I swim twice a week, <laughs> that I know what's going through her body and head. I said, how about this, Tara? What's happening in one of Tara's heats? Her body, operating at peak performance, enters into the best stroke at the best frequency with the least amount of water resistance possible. After taking the best dive and staying underwater for the maximal distance, she enters into the best race possible, ideally a perfect breaststroke 100-meter or 200-meter heat. And during this ideal heat, she is operating on autopilot, with all of the coaching, training, and muscle memory taking over. And in the freedom that all of that preparation has given her, she lets herself go completely throwing herself into the race and is fully alive, fully an athlete, fully human, and fully the person God has made her to be. Her response, quote, your interpretation of my lack of description of my feelings during my races was perfect. <laughs> yes. So we all try to own somebody who's famous, right? So now we're best bud. She's never seen me. She wouldn't notice me in the mall. Maybe I should remember how you wrote it, so now I know how to. So I, so I know now how to respond to the next person who asked me this question. There is a way to do your dolphin kick underwater to minimize drag, to create the perfect undulating wave with just the right amplitude and frequency for your body type. So it'll be different for one body type versus another. There's a way. There's a way to do your underwater pullout as you're coming through the surface after each turn, she writes. Your body has to be in perfect streamline. Head, neck, and spine all have to be in a line, making, your head, making sure your head isn't too high or too low, unquote. There is a way, she writes, during the pull phase. That's when you're coming up above the water and your hands are coming back. During the pull phase, you want your arms to recover over the surface as much as possible to reduce drag. Also keeping your pull relatively narrow and putting your head into streamline at, at the perfect time during the pull. There is a way to live your human life before the face of God, your maker, each one of you. God gave us laws in the Old Testament. You should not commit adultery because the way is a, a monogamous relationship with another person and sharing all of your love with them and them receiving God's love through you and not messing around, not stealing, because there's a way that involves work, good work, four hours in the pool every day, six days a week, training work, with your hands work, with your eye and your design heart work. And God has that gift for you. There's a way. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. There's a way. There's a way that this book teaches in the positive and in the negative. Stories of people who fall off the way, and death comes. The slow death of sin ruining a life, or the real death of walking off a cliff or being swallowed in a fire. And then stories of goodness and the right way and the truth. Uh, the story about the word and the way, Jesus Christ, the model of a perfect human life, laying down your life for others and speaking measured, kingdom-given, godly tones and words to bring salvation to God's world. There is a way and Jesus knew the way. It's already running through your head, isn't it? He was the way. 
I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then the Apostle Paul responding to his renewed life and finding something he'd never had before in meeting Christ writes, so then for me, for, for to me to live is Christ. He is the way. He's the way in you, in me. So, what does this, what else does this breaststroker say about you, Lord? Well, in my mind, the icon, the parable of a perfect heat was a pointer to the way, this perfect life that is Jesus Christ. And it made me wonder this week, and I wanted to write a big blog on it, never got to it, but is there a perfect way for Sarah? And a perfect way for Wendy and Janelle and Andrew and Fran? And is there a way for your life? And no, no, no perfection this side of heaven. We look through a glass darkly, but in a now not fully yet way, is there a way? And if there is, how do we find it? How can you find it? Can I find it? What else, God, through an Olympic breaststroker? I think, in thinking about her, um, God is affirming his nature as the maker and sustainer of all things, all culture, all cultural products that are good and true and right are God's cultural products. A 100 or 200 meter Olympic breaststroke heat is God's good cultural product. And we are called as human beings to image a God who makes and sustains things and takes them further to do the exact same thing. We're called in the book of Genesis to do that. God said, let us make human beings in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move on the ground. So God created human beings, you, in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, us. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and this is the calling, what theologians call the cultural mandate. I talk about it all the time, right? He said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth, not just with people and babies, but with culture and everything that the earth gets filled with. Smokestacks and revolutions and fill the earth and subdue it, not in a coercive ruin the world way. We do that a lot, but God's calling is to subdue it in a godly, selfless, serving way. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. We are called to have dominion over creation and to be co-rulers with God through Christ in the subduing and the making of the world. We are called to rule over the water, to master our bodies, to rule over ourselves, to create cultural sporting products, and to make them the best they can be. So I wrote this in a blog post this week. Every time London Olympian Tara Van Bylen shows dominion over the water, she images a God who at creation gathered the water into one place and said, this far you may come and no further. Jesus designed and made water. Everything that was made was made through him. Jesus designed and made water to nourish and sustain the world and to bring life to the glory of his Father. Terra, in a way, is part of a cultural phenomenon of remaking the world and water into a medium for athletic flourishing, a place to feel fully alive and human for worshiping God in her dominion-sharing, culture-making way. Jesus walked on water. Terra flies through water. Jesus turned water into wine. Tongue-in-cheek, Terra may turn it into gold, silver, or bronze.
surely the God who is timeless and knows all things had Olympic swimming in mind when he created water. And I'm not sure if Jesus swam or not, but he might have. No reason why he wouldn't have. All the jokes online when I posted that question was, why when you can walk on the water, right? And surely, in that perfect place where all our heats will be just right and perfect again in that new heaven on earth, when that river flows from the headwater throne that is our God's throne, surely we'll be swimming in it. You guys together with your kids, surely there will be swimming there. God made a swimmer's body and the passion and drive to win and succeed and the calling and he delights in the Olympics, in your life, in what you do and how you love people and care for your mom and love your kids and serve and live and have your being. One of the emails I wrote to Tara, I said this, I think God is glorified and your life is most full when you get the most possible out of your body. All those muscle fiber twitches, an anthem of praise, every breath a psalm. And out of your mind, filling it with God's strength and determination and breaststroking truth to the point where all of it becomes second nature. And out of your soul, because she's a person of faith. Understanding that you have been made through and for, this is through and this is for what you're doing, Jesus Christ. All you do is for him. I think God delights in your mastery of the breaststroke, Tara, and will be smiling big time this summer. If you think your parents and your siblings and your friends are going to be smiling when they watch you race, think again. And why not? Why can't her way of serving and loving and being and worshiping God be happening here today in a pool in this part of her life? And why can't you be fully human doing business in a God-honoring way doing politics, Joan? Joan's running for the Conservative Party leadership in Calgary Center. If you love her, she's been at New Hope forever. Even if you don't and you're conservative, give her a hand. <laughs> Can I get, like, future government help? Because, no, <laughs> no. But why not? Fixing kidneys and people with broken kidneys. Restoring our home and native land. Loving a grandson. God made you with all of that passion and those gifts for this time right now. Why can't those be the means by which you worship and love and honor God? Even as Tara does it in the pool, you do it in whatever pool you swim in. Paul writes, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. And yes, pray. Pray fervently, ceaselessly, and read your Bible. It's like honey when you really get to tasting it. And ingesting it and letting it transform you from the inside out and be in a church community and serve and be good in so far as you can but know him in the doing too in the office at home at school i think god means for you and i to know him all the time in all things 
So this week, I'm at the pool on Thursday, and I'm thinking about this 100-meter qualifying or this race that she's going to do, the butterfly. And I, the butterfly is the only one I can do at the pool with Edward, so I don't go fast because I have a disabled son at the pool. That's why I'm slow. Um, <laughs> you'll find out how slow in just a second. Anyway, I do the breaststroke. It's the only one I can do without hurting parts of my body, it seems. <laughs> and I thought, okay, she did it 100 meters in 107.37. What can I do 100 meters in, right? So I get 50 meters in, I had to slow down or I was going to have a coronary and drown. <laughs> a literal stroke as a result of breaststroke. Pastor dies of breaststroke, preparing stroke during breaststroke sermon preparation. <laughs> three minutes. Yeah, three times the time it took her. It was awful. So I get up and I'm sucking for air, holding onto the side of the pool. And then I see two lanes over, this young woman, vroom. Boom, just flying back and forth on our 25-meter pool. And I thought, i got to talk to her. I bet you she's a competitive swimmer. And so later on, Edward and I are in the hot tub, and this girl, sure enough, walks over, and I kind of sidle over in the hot tub. And I know this must creep people out. <laughs> I always wonder, Francis, Fran Francis, John, you got to be careful. Like, and I was careful, dear. I asked her. I said, I saw you swim there, and you were flying. Can I ask you some questions about swimming? Because I think you're a competitive swimmer. And sure enough, Olivia was five years ago. And we talked about the nature of swimming and the moment, that, that in the heat moment of flow and aliveness. And I said, you know, St. Irenaeus said this. And she goes, exactly, fully alive. I said, fully you, yes, exactly. That's how I feel when I'm swimming. And then she went on to tell me about how five years ago she was swimming on a scholarship in Boston at a school there. She tore something in her shoulder and uh, her career ended, you know. She must have been a teenager, 20, 21. And it stopped and she said, it's taken me five years to let go of that passion and that calling and that vision. And, you know, we were talking about Tara, and she knows of her, and she was genuinely happy for the success of this fellow swimmer. But for her, the story ended. And I said, in the hot tub, <laughs> um, but maybe it's not just in the swimming moment where you can feel that flow and that fully alive thing. I think it's meant to happen in every part of your life, relationally and in whatever career you're doing. And, she kind of nodded along, and then I realized Edward is gone. <laughs> uh, Sacrifice your downy boy for some good sermon exegesis. So I had to go find him in the steam room, and so I said, I got to go get my son. So uh, nice to meet you. And uh, yeah, I don't know what God does with those things in people's lives, but it's like she needed to know, right? Um, and I think she knew already. There are other moments of being fully alive. Last week, I read an article in the Globe and Mail on competitive swimming, and they say for the, the top, the world leaders, pain management, tolerance, is it for winning a race. One uh, swimmer spoke of uh, Phelps and Lochte, the two American men swimmers, and said, uh, those two guys have found a way to train themselves or convince themselves to let their mind be in control instead of their bodies. The lactic acid buildup that makes you just want to stop. You can't go on. They go through that warning sign, getting the best of their minds. Enduring pain, significant pain, in order to achieve great victory. So often in my 50 years, I've learned that pain and victory, suffering and finishing well are intertwined. The dark always precedes the dawn, and death in some form, way or shape, precedes resurrection. And the truth is, none of us are in London today. And we probably resonate more with Olivia's story than we do with Tara's story because we mess up and fall short of the glory of God. We're still waiting for the win. 
We know Olivia's story. Many of us do. But many of us know Christ's as well. And it's a good story with a great ending, no matter how wonky your swimming technique or style or life is. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the writer of the Hebrews writes, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed, that exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way, cross, shame, lactic acid, whatever. And now he's there. He's there. We're here. He's there. Your interceder, your advocate, your king, your lover, your hope, your life. And now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God. Imagine the podium this week. When you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item. That long litany of hostility that he plowed through, and that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. Let's pray. You, Jesus, are the author and perfecter, the finisher of our faith. Apart from your spirit uh, making us, waking us, drawing us to yourself, telling us that we're part of a bigger story, a bigger games, we'd be blind, groping through dark alleys, not knowing, not seeing. But because you've touched us, because you've whispered, this is your place, this is your name, this is what God, my Father, feels about you, this is who you are, we have life and we have a story. And we may not ever make it onto a big podium somewhere with a big award, but we will make it onto a big podium one day with a big reward. All of your righteousness, all of your victory, all of your glory given to a broken person who knew nothing more than to, by grace, say yes. As we uh, watch the games, maybe, or play our games and experience moments of exhilaration, and, uh, and, w and the win of life help us to uh, see through those times, those foretastes, those iconic moments to our eternal glory before you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.